Today I'm doing a shop my stash, get ready with me, and creating this everyday wearable cool toned makeup look. Hey guys, welcome back. I hope that you're having a great Monday so far. If you are new here, my name is Julie, and I'll help you find the best affordable beauty and drugstore makeup products. I'll show you how to enjoy your current makeup collection and help you to become more confident and elevate your beauty from the inside out by teaching you my best makeup techniques and sharing with you my most valuable life lessons. So if that resonates with you, you should subscribe and stick around. I went through my makeup collection and pulled out some cool toned makeup one of you guys requested that I do a full face, cool toned makeup look. And I know that you guys have really been enjoying these stop, these <laughs> shop my stash, get ready with me videos, and also really wearable everyday looks. So I'm gonna be doing a tutorial with all three of those today. So let's go ahead and jump into yes. this. I did apply my skincare off camera, so I will link down below what I used. For my primer today, I'm going to be using this Maybelline Perfector 4-in-1 Glow Makeup. I've really been enjoying this in combination with my Revlon Colorstay. So if I want a long-wearing glowy makeup, this is what I've been doing. Because this will create the right amount of glow for me. And while I do enjoy my really illuminating foundations like the Revlon Luminance Serum Tint, the Superstay Skin Tint, and the L'Oreal Pro Glow, while I do enjoy those, sometimes I just find that they are almost too illuminating for me and I can tend to look a little greasy with those. And maybe some people enjoy a super dewy look and there are times where I do like that, but sometimes I just find it a bit too much. But with what I was trying to say in that is this product underneath the Revlon Colorstay gives me the perfect amount of glow. And I never feel like it's too much. My skin doesn't feel tacky whenever I use these in combination with each other. And I find it to be a very long wearing combination. So I'm going to be using my Revlon Colorstay today in 150 and I'm starting to run out of this. I went ahead and ordered another one. Like this foundation, I will go through on a regular basis because since it is my holy grail foundation and the foundation that I tend to use most of the time, I do go through this. So if you do not have this little tool in your life, you need this. This used to be called the Spatty Daddy. <laughs> I think it might just be called the Spatty now but I will link it down below. And this thing is really good for getting all of the little bits of foundation out of your foundation bottle so you don't waste as much product as you would if you just relied on the pump alone. Because at some point it's like hard for the pump to get all of your foundation out. So that little tool has probably saved me a lot of money. Um, so I'm just, I just blended some of that on the back of my hand so I could get like an even working space and just dip my sponge in there. And with my sponges, my makeup sponges, sometimes I do forget to mention it in videos, but I always dampen my makeup sponges off camera and I'm using the Wet n Wild makeup sponge. So if you're curious as to what I'm using, and I really enjoy this sponge. I know there's a lot of really great affordable makeup sponges out there nowadays where, you know, you definitely don't need the beauty blender to get a nice blended makeup look with a sponge. There's so many great options out there now. Can you guys hear that? <laughs> Snow plow. <laughs> Today we actually got some snow, but really it's nothing. It's just like a slight dusting. I think it may have iced a little bit before it started snowing, or maybe not. Maybe it's just snow, but they're just being extra cautious about making sure they keep the roads cleaned and clear. Um, 
But yeah, one good thing about working from home now doing YouTube full time is I don't have to worry about getting out in the snow. <laughs> so poor Josh, he had to go out and start his car this morning and it's really cold today. Like right now it's 17, but this morning when I first woke up, it was eight degrees outside. And I know for those of you guys that live in the northern United States or maybe in other places of the world that gets really cold, eight degrees is not, oh, actually it's six degrees out right now. Today, the high is supposed to be 17. <laughs> I was looking at my, um, I have my phone sitting up here with like the temperatures outside and I was looking at that wrong, but yeah, so, but I got totally off tangent of what I was saying that those of you guys that live up north, it's like, yeah, six degrees might not really be much for you guys, but here where I live in Kentucky, I mean, it gets cold like that on occasion, but for the most part in the winter, the temperatures are usually in the 20s and 30s. Every once in a while, it'll get in the teens. So this is very cold weather for us. So yeah, um, I hope that you guys are staying warm where you're at, but I know that this weekend, it snowed in a lot of places. This is January the 15th, so... I've been filming my videos like a week ahead, but I hope that you guys are staying warm and that everybody is doing well. For my under eyes, I finally remembered to use this Catrice under eye brightener before I go in with my concealer. So I'm using that. So we're gonna see how this works underneath concealer instead of on, to on top of it. <laughs> I do find that this under eye brightener is a little darker than like the Becca under eye brightener. Like it's a little bit more like peachy, like more of a peachy pink where, I mean the Becca under eye brightener is a peachy pink, but it's a very light, very light peachy pink. This has a little bit more color to it. But so this is the eye with the under eye corrector. This is the eye without. So, I mean, it does do a little bit of under eye brightening, which is nice. And the formula of this is about the same texture as the Becca one. It feels about the same. I feel like my under eyes are still like pretty dry. I've been using our humidifier in the evenings, but my skin like just gets so dry in the winter, like in certain areas of my skin, like usually like around my nose, like in like this corner area of my eye, my lips, and sometimes like on my eyelids can get kind of dry. But I find that like in my T-zone, it doesn't really get dry. So maybe I'm, instead of me having like dry skin, maybe I'm more like normal combo. And I'm just gonna apply some of my Vaseline Lip Therapy Rosy Lips to moisturize. I might need to get some Aquaphor. That stuff is amazing for really dry, cracked, chapped lips. Um, I'm trying to find my concealer that I'm using today. I've still been testing out the L'Oreal True Match Serum Corrector. So I'm gonna use that today. I feel like maybe this concealer isn't super long wearing, but I'm still trying to figure it out. And I don't know what is in this, but it must have like alcohol or something in the formula. So I don't know, I might need to look into like what the ingredients are because this really makes my eyes like get teared up every time I go to apply it. So I don't know, it, that might be another reason why my under eyes are getting kind of dry. But as you can see, that's really brightening with the under eye brightener for my concealer. I mean, I do enjoy the applicator on this, like how it's like flat and I really like the shape of it. So it's just gonna be like unfortunate if this is drying and has alcohol in it to dry out my under eyes, I don't know. And I know that like not all alcohol in makeup products is necessarily drying. So I don't know, I'm gonna have to look into it, do some research. But I don't know if you guys can see what I'm talking about, about how my under eyes get really dry under here. 
But see what I'm talking about? Like how it just looks really like all the product is like just clinging to all the skin around my eyes. I have issues with that in general with concealer. Do any of you guys struggle with that? Because I feel like no one else on YouTube ever talks about struggling with that with their under eyes. And sometimes I find with a lot of under eye concealers, or not concealers, under eye creams, they can just be almost too much and sit on top of the skin. And then when you go to apply foundation or concealer, it just peels and then it kind of defeats the whole purpose of it and just makes your makeup look worse. So I know that I keep asking you guys for under eye cream recommendations, but if any of you guys struggle like me with like these type of issues and have found the concealer or not the concealer, <laughs> the under eye cream that works for you, let us know down in the comments because I just really need to find that perfect under eye cream. And I don't know, maybe she does not exist. <laughs> maybe I'm just hoping for something that's not out there. For my eyeshadow primer, I'm going to be using the Hard Candy Longwear Eyeshadow Primer. I swear, like, one of my neighbors has the loudest trucks of life, and I think that was one of my neighbors. I just wanted to go ahead and prime my my eyes now so that this could be dry by the time I do my eyeshadow. I'm just setting my foundation and concealer with my L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable Powder. What are some pressed powders that you have been enjoying lately that I should pick up and try out? I have the Maybelline Superstay um, powder. I think that's what it's called. But the shade that I have in this is a little bit too dark for me. Like, yeah, I have the Maybelline Superstay. And I have shade 102. And I find that this one is a little darker. Like, I need maybe the shade down from this. Like, this is a little bit yellowy and dark. And this one's a little bit more neutral and lighter so I don't know I think maybe they make shade 100 in this or 101 I don't know but I need to pick that up just so just let me know in the comments like what your favorite pressed powders have been I know so many people rave about the Maybelline Fit Me the loose powder like I know Emily Noel loves that powder so much but I just cannot get into loose powders. I don't know why, but I just don't find that they look good on me. Like, they just look really powdery. Maybe I just don't know how to apply them in the right way. So, I don't know. But just let me know in the comments what your favorite pressed powders have been. Then for my eyebrows today, I'm going in with the Maybelline Build-A-Brow. So first I'm just going to use the gel to brush my eyebrows up and then I'm going in with the brow pen side and filling in any of the little gaps in my eyebrows or just making them look a little bit more even. And then I go back with the brow gel to set the brows in place and I've really been enjoying this product. I like how it makes my brows look really natural and fluffy. I just love the fluffy brow look. And this product lasts all day long. I don't have any issues like with the little brow hairs that I draw on, like smudging off or wearing off or anything like that. It literally lasts until I wash my makeup off at the end of the day. I do highly recommend this product. I really like it a lot. But the shade that I use in this Build-A-Brow is in Ash Brown. For the eyes today, I pulled out a couple of cool toned eyeshadow palettes that I really enjoy. So the Maybelline City Mini Palette in Chill Brunch Neutrals. This is such a beautiful cool tones palette. I know that it has like, I guess this shade over here is like a little bit more warm toned in the palette, but the rest of the shades are pretty cool tones, like a cool toned mauve. And then this little palette here from Wet n Wild, which I know that this has been discontinued for a while, but this is one of my favorite cool tones little everyday palettes. This is the Silent Treatments. And then I just did a tutorial on this one not too long ago. 
And I consider this more of a cool tones palette, but this is the CoverGirl Shimmering Sands Little Eyeshadow Quad. So I feel like any of these three palettes, or I guess little like quads, this one is a little mini palette, but they are great everyday little eyeshadow palettes that are just quick and easy to use. Today I'm going to use the City Mini Palette, and I'm going to try to do just mostly a one and done look. I might go in with some of this shade, but we'll just see. And I'm gonna use this shade over here all over the eyelid. I think first I'm gonna try to go in with my finger and see how this works. I usually don't apply this with my finger, but it definitely can be applied with the finger. And it's a little harder for me to apply eyeshadows with my finger when I have nails just cause my eyes are deep set and it's hard to get in there. So I think I am gonna go in with a little brush. So I'm just getting some more of that shade on this Wet n Wild small concealer brush. And this color is a really pretty taupe, like a grayish taupe, but it's really beautiful, has a lot of uh, pretty little sparkles in it. Most people never talk about these City Mini palettes from Maybelline, but they are really great quality. The shadows do have a bit more kick up in the pan than like Profusion eyeshadows, but I wouldn't say that they have any more kick up than some of the Wet n Wild eyeshadow palettes. I would say that these are definitely just as comparable as the Wet n Wild Color Icon palettes. I think maybe the reason why people don't talk about these very much like here on YouTube is they're not they're not expensive palettes. Like this little palette is around $7 if you get it at Target or Walmart. Um but I feel like a lot of people here on YouTube either talk about products that are extremely affordable like Wet n Wild, which I love Wet n Wild. Or people talk about products that are super expensive, like on the other end. But a lot of the middle products that have like a mid price range, people don't tend to talk about that those products as much. Because most of the time on YouTube, people want to make content that has a little bit of a clickbait. Not that they're doing it intentional, but just because most people are curious when they see a product that is priced really low, they want to, like you guys would want to know what it is. Like I'm just as curious about that too. Um, and of course people are really curious about super expensive things because maybe you would never buy that, but you like to watch other people use it because I'm also like that. But don't underestimate these little palettes, especially like for everyday eyeshadows. They are so good so pretty and then i'm just going back with a clean fluffy blending blending brush and going around the edge of the shadow now if you wanted a really quick one and done eyeshadow look you could just leave it like this and do your mascara uh oh oh no I think one of the cats have a hairball <laughs> let me go check on them <laughs> Little buddies, are you getting sick? Are you okay? Breathe, breathe, Pepe. Breathe, okay. Breathe, okay. Poor little pet pep. I think she's okay. <laughs> she just got a little hairball. But back to what I was saying is, you know, you could just do one and done with that shade. I think it's really pretty. Like honestly, all of the shimmer shades. In this little palette are great one and done eyeshadow. But what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna put a little bit of this shade in the crease just to add a little definition. And I really think this is such a pretty like mauve. Salem agrees. <laughs> I love the cream shade in this palette. It is really finely milled. So if you drop this palette, it breaks really easily, which is what happens. But I do really like this shade. It's such a pretty matte white. And I need to tweeze out my brow hairs. It's like I never notice them until I go to put eyeshadow on my brow bone. And then I'm like, dang it, I've got little hairs I need to tweeze out. 
But like if I wasn't talking to you guys so much, this would be just like a really quick like look to do. It wouldn't require that much. And then I'm just grabbing a little bit more of that matte white and I'm gonna use it here in the inner corner. And then for my bronzer today, I'm gonna use this NYX. This is a blush, their high definition blush in taupe, which is such a pretty cool toned bronzer or contour product. This also makes for like a great like contour shade or like mid-tone shade for the crease. I'm just gonna use a little bit of that there. It's very similar to that purple shade, but obviously, you know, a little bit more brown instead of purple, but it does have that taupey kind of shade. So if you are looking for a very cool toned bronzer, look no further. This is your bronzer. <laughs> But I am going to apply this really carefully. Sometimes it's a little hard for me to use this um, because it is so cool toned, but it has a little bit of that mauve undertone, which makes it a little bit more, more wearable. Like there has been times where I've just really gotten into this and I've actually used this product up one time before and had to buy a new one. I'm a little uncertain if NYX still makes this. I'm pretty sure they do. So I will link it down below in the description box. Like all the products I'm using today, I will have linked down there for you guys. Cause I have bought this off of Amazon before. So I'm pretty sure you can still get it off of Amazon. I'm gonna go with like a bigger, uh, a bigger powder brush to blend this around the hairline. But this also makes for a really pretty like blush as well. Like if you need a more like cool toned bronzery type of blush. But I do feel like it creates like a really natural kind of contoured effect on the skin. So I really enjoy this product. I think it's really nice. Then for blush, I was debating between my Flower Beauty Flower Pot blush in Sweet Pea. This is probably the coolest toned blush that I have in my collection. I recently picked up the e.l.f. Camo liquid blush and this is in the shade Suave Mauve, I believe. Yeah, Suave Mauve, which is also a really pretty cool toned blush. It is a little bit more warm than the powder blush. So I think I'm gonna use the powder blush today just because I don't think I've used this too much in videos, but I do feel like I kinda used it recently. But I'm just going to apply this with my Real, Techni Real Techniques blush brush. Sometimes I forget what I've used on camera <laughs> just because I do try to use a lot of the products in my collection. I usually try to switch things up, even if I do a look that's like my go-to type of look. I do try to like rotate my products and use them. And I've really tried to get my makeup collection down to like products that I really love using. It's like I use the Marie Kondo method. Like, does this bring me joy? Like, do I like using this? And if the product does not bring me joy or if I don't like using it, I've just been decluttering it from my makeup collection because why do I wanna keep something in my collection if I'm not using? And it's just like collecting dust. Like, there's just no need. I know like sometimes it takes a little bit of time to figure out if you really enjoy a product or not. And some products that you used to enjoy, sometimes over time you find out they don't really work for you anymore, or maybe you don't like them as much as you used to. And you know, it's totally okay to declutter those from your collection. I feel like I have a bunch of powder on me, <laughs> but those are okay to declutter from your collection and give them to someone else. Or, you know, if they haven't been used too much, like I like to resell my makeup on Macari, like clean it up, sanitize it and everything, give it a new home. So yeah, I definitely recommend that in your collection. And then that allows room for you to purchase new items, especially if you resell like gently used makeup, then 
you know, you make a little bit of money back, which then you can use to purchase like more products. So that's my philosophy. And I feel like it's a lot less wasteful. And it also helps maybe other people that can't afford to buy something at full price, they can get it at a little bit of a discount. So yeah. Then for a cool toned highlight, I have two products here. I have the Laura Mercier Baked Highlighter, which I know that this is more expensive, but it's one of my very, very favorite highlighters in my makeup collection. And this thing will last you forever. Like I swear there has been times where I have used this as my daily highlight for months and months and months. And I still have not hit pan on this. So it is really beautiful. And then recently I've been getting back into this Maybelline Master Strobing Stick, which is also a really pretty like pinky highlight. So I guess I'm going to use the Maybelline one today. I know that this has been discontinued. I think I have been able to find it online, but it's like one of those things where it's way more expensive now. It is basically like high-end prices because you can't really get it anywhere. Um, so there's a lot of great cool tone highlights out there. But I just, I really think this is such a pretty one. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and mist my face before I do my lips and mascara. And I'm just using my Urban Decay All Nighter. I went ahead and curled up my lashes and applied some of my mascara and I used the Maybelline Lash Sensational in Blackest Black today. For my lips, I pulled out my coolest, my, I pulled out some cool toned lipsticks and lip liners. Like I went through and pulled out like the coolest tones that I had. So I just want to do like a few swatches of some things just to show you guys. And maybe some of these tones that I'm like, these are cool tones for me. Maybe these would be warm tones for you guys. But these are my coolest tone lip liners that I have in my collection. So this one here is definitely the coolest. This is the Maybelline Gone Grage lip liner. Then this one here is a Believe Beauty liner and that is in the shade Almost Rose. And then this here is a Rimmel lip liner in Addiction. So those are my three most cool toned lip liners. And then when it comes to like lip sticks or like lip products, I'm just gonna do some swatches here of those. Okay, so this is a Maybelline Colorstay like crayon, and this is in the shade On The Grind. And then this one over here is definitely the coolest toned. It's also the Maybelline Gone Grage, where it's a taupe gray kind of color, and it pairs really nice with their Gone Grage lip liner. I have the Maybelline, um, Taupe Seduction, which I'm not for sure if Maybelline still makes this lipstick. It was like a high shine sort of lipstick line. This one here is the CoverGirl Romance Mauve. And then this over here is Milani Statement Lipstick in Rose Femme. So these are the coolest toned lipsticks that I have in my collection. I feel like these swatches are a bit odd. And like I said, I'm not for sure if all of these lip products are still made, but maybe this gives you some inspiration on ones that you can pull out from your collection. I mean, I do have some other kind of cool toned browns, but I wanted to pull like more mauve tones. I think today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Maybelline Gone Grage Lip Liner, and I'm gonna top that with the CoverGirl Romance Mauve, so. Let's just go ahead and do that. I did want to show you what the Maybelline Color Sensational Lip Liner in Gone Grage looked like by itself. <laughs> Another plow, snow plow. We'll let it pass. 
definitely making sure our roads are very clean. I live on a main road and so they're always making sure it's really clean, which is nice. But I did want to show you this lip liner by itself. I do find the lip liner in Gone Grage to be a bit more wearable than the matte lipstick. That can be pretty intimidating. And I know that this color might not work for some skin tones, but if you're looking for a really nice, cool toned lip liner, look no further. This is the perfect one. And I do find that it is wear long wearing on its own. Like there's been times where I'll just wear this by itself, but I'm gonna go ahead and top it with the Romance Mauve. This will make it a little bit more wearable. And it will just add that little bit of shine. But these two pair really nicely together to just create like a beautiful cool toned look. If you enjoyed this cool tone makeup look today, this everyday cool tone makeup look, give this video a thumbs up. Just whatever you guys would like to see, let me know in the comments. And I hope that you guys are having a great start to your Monday today. Have a great day and I will see you all in tomorrow's video. Bye-bye. Shouldn't doubt yourself cause you're a work of art